Hey, happy holidays everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is Juice. Today's video is going to be a semi-short one. It's going to be about wake turbulence during AAR, Air, Airborne Aerial Refueling Operations. And we're going to talk about some of the considerations for the different types of AAR processes in, as they relate to DCS world. Uh, the one we're going to be talking about mostly is about the uh, MPRS, uh, Multipoint Refueling System, uh, like we're doing today in the Hornet. Let's go ahead and open up that basket, or open up the probe, silence our radar. So we're coming up behind Shell. We've already contacted him on radar. We've got the uh, TACAN set, a 37 X-ray. Uh, this mission is available in the download section. Uh, I'll put a link in the description here. But what we're doing today is, is I think there's been a little bit of a tweak or an update to the wake turbulence system to make it a little bit more realistic. And I'll show you what I mean. Um, this wasn't like this like two weeks to a month ago. And granted, I haven't done a lot of AAR in the last two months, but I remember from the last you know time I did AAR that it wasn't this wasn't an effector. Um, we've always had wake turbulence since probably February of 2019 or something like that, or you know somewhere around there. Might have been February 2020. Um, but the thing is, is the wake turbulence has actually gotten has actually gotten better in game, I think. And we're going to test that today. Now, what what used to be is uh, used to happen if you came in level with the tanker, which you're not supposed to do, in line, you'd get jostled around a little bit, get bumped around a little bit. But I don't remember it, and correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I don't remember the vortices being modeled more correctly. To um, if you're on the left side, it rolls you right with the wing turbulence, wake turbulence coming off the vortices off the wingtip, and if you're on the right side, it comes off on the left. So, so we've got noses cold, switches safe. Uh, we've got the strobe light off. Everything's good. We got our lights set. There, we're a half mile from him now, so he just turned on his lights. So we're gonna go in like you're not supposed to do. Tanker's just about 300 knots at 20,000 feet. So we came in at 19,000 until we had visual. We came up to 19.5. And then normally you want to stay at 19.5 or slowly creep up to your a couple hundred feet below and when you go in trail to call pre-contact. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to do what we used to do in the old days when we were first starting to refuel. Is we'd come in like this and we'd go straight to the basket. So let's go, let's get cleared for the basket first and I'll show you what I mean. All right, let's see. We're a little bit far out. Let's see if he does it. Yeah, got to get a little bit closer. Ready, recontact. You'll notice Return, recontact. if I let go of the stick, it wants to roll right now because we're in that wake turbulence uh, wingtip vortices. It's actually spiraling clockwise off of the wingtip right now. Ready, recontact. Cleared contact. All right, here comes the basket. Now look at this. I'm letting go of the stick, and I'm getting rolled over to the right. I'm just getting rolled over there. Now watch as I go in closer. If I stay up here, let go of the stick, still getting rolled. I had it perfectly trimmed before we got up here. Now let's get in closer. Still rolling to the right, still rolling to the right. And right about, let's see when I can release pressure, right about there. All right, now I'm in front of the wake turbulence. Let's go ahead and plug. little bit uh, turbulent there and then I'm gonna let go of the stick no problem no problem watch as I come off I'm gonna come off the boom or off the probe now or off the basket I get right about there now I start to roll now watch what happens check right watch what happens when I switch to the right side we're gonna come up we're gonna simulate that somebody's already on the left uh, that's a good thing to do too if you're refueling with a buddy have him plug on the uh, on the left and then go ahead and call ready, ready pre contact and you'll get the right basket and that's fun to do too it gives you a different perspective now i'm being rolled to the left right now look at that i just let go of the stick and it's rolling to the left i'm not adjusting the trim not doing anything and so now i talked to you about the uh, or i talked in the uh, thumbnail about the three different types of refueling systems you've got mprs or multi-point refueling system which is this is uh, this is an mprs tanker you also have the uh, drogue basket with boom that comes straight off the center and and I have been on missions where we've refueled that way on the KC-135 so I've been on the uh, fueling end passing the gas to Navy fighters uh, back in the Persian Gulf and that one is similar to uh, 
boom tanking that the Air Force does, you know, where you actually plug in with the receptacle on the airplane. However, there's a basket on the bottom, and it's not there's not a lot of play in that basket. It's only about eight to twelve feet long, and stuff. So there's not a lot of room to go around. So it's uh, the multi-point refueling system is really uh, a modern a modern update that's only been around for a few years for the Air Force to uh, use their KC-135s. The KC-130s have always had it when they do helicopters or fixed wing. Uh, the KC-10s have it now, I believe. And so it's a really, you know, I'm pretty sure the KC, uh, as a matter of fact, I think the KC-46 Pegasus has a boom in the center that you can refuel Air Force airplanes. They don't have to reconfigure the airplane every time. So now you notice, look at this. I'm f coming in like I was going to get on the stick like an F-16 would. I'm not getting any roll, no roll at all. And this would be the same if there was a basket on the end of that coming down. I'd actually like to see if it still works. I notice, I know that uh, a lot of people don't use that. They always use the MPRS when they're refueling tankers or refueling Navy fighters and stuff like that. So, but I think, and if you guys can correct me, I did not see it. I, I searched. I asked Big Nui. He hasn't answered back yet. But I did not see if there was an update recently that they updated the vortices to make them more realistic. So. But remember, we always had, since the wake turbulence was turned on, we always had the random buffeting behind the aircraft, but nothing like this. This is new. Uh, that's my theory, and I'm sticking to it until proven elsewise. If you guys have the correct information, be sure to leave a comment. Again, if you're on the left side and you're coming in, you're going to want to come in low like this, so you're not fighting the wake turbulence as much. And then when you get below the basket, you want to come up to it like that. And you're going through, and you fly right through the basket. And contact. All right, that concludes the video. Enjoy, guys. Get out there and enjoy DCS. Have a safe Christmas. Have a safe New Year, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care.